How do you follow that? <laughs> Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's how Easter should begin, right? With praises and alleluias and joyful singing. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yeah, that's how it should begin. But today, as we read the conclusion of Mark's gospel, Easter doesn't begin with alleluias. It begins with fear. Now certainly it's understandable that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, would have been afraid. I mean, just think about the week that they have just had. Not even the whole week. Just think about Friday. I invite you to remember Friday with the inspired words of the late Reverend Dr. S.M. Lockridge. On Friday, as Jesus was praying, Judas was betraying. But they didn't know that Sunday was a coming. Pilate was struggling, the council was conspiring, and the crowd was vilifying. But they didn't know that Sunday was a coming. The disciples were running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary was crying, Peter denying. Because even though Jesus had told them, they didn't know that Sunday was a coming. On Friday, the Romans beat Jesus. They robed him in scarlet and crowned him with thorns. On Friday, the soldiers nailed our Savior to the cross. On Friday, the disciples questioned what had happened to their Savior, their King. And then as the earth shook and the skies grew dark, our king yielded his spirit. On Friday, hope was lost. Death had won. That was Friday, and they didn't know that Sunday was a coming. I think we can see why those women would have been afraid. After all they had seen and experienced in their hearts, in their minds, it was still Friday. So all the more startling for them as they approach the tomb, there just to anoint Jesus' body, and they see the stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty, and a stranger who seems to speak matter-of-factly, Jesus has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. Of course, they are alarmed because even though Jesus had told them, they didn't understand that Sunday was coming. Easter begins with fear. But that's just the beginning of the story. You see, even though today's fear-filled reading takes us to the end of Mark's gospel, it's still just the beginning. And I think that's exactly what Mark had in mind. We look back at how Mark begins his gospel story. Right there at chapter 1, verse 1, he says, This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, I can't help but agree with theologians who have pondered, what if Mark's stories of John the Baptist and Jesus in the wilderness are not the beginning? What if all of it is the beginning? All 16 chapters from the waters of baptism right there to the empty tomb, this is just the beginning. 
we can understand why those women began that first Easter afraid, amazed by fear, filled with Good Friday pain. But then we remember we are not a Good Friday people. We are an Easter Sunday people. We are the witnesses to testify to all the truth of what Jesus has taught and done. Maybe those first disciples didn't understand, and I'm pretty sure most of us don't fully understand either, but we know what Sunday means. That's why churches swell at Easter, to bear witness to the truth that God so loved the world, that God sent God's only Son to die on the cross for us, yes, but to be raised for us too. We are beckoned to live lives amazed by the love of God for the whole world. To live amazed by grace. And that's why our Easter begins with Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And that's why the story of Jesus' life and death and resurrection is just the beginning. We know the story doesn't end there because we are here. And this is our story too. The truth is that resurrection isn't just a one-time event that happened 2,000 years ago. If we believed that, we would miss being amazed by grace each and every day. If we believed that, we would miss being a part of the new life that's happening all around us. If we believed that, we would be caught in Good Friday and forget that it is Sunday. I was reminded of this just this past week as the Westchester University Lutheran Student Association gathered for our Holy Week dinner and worship and over our meal, the conversation gravitated to the tragedy of the plane crash in Germany. As we talked about the mental illness and the suffering of that young pilot who tragically decided to take 150 other lives when he took his own. And then our conversation turned to parents in India who blatantly help their children cheat on exams by literally climbing the outer walls of their schools to pass notes and answers through the windows. Then we talked about the anti-Muslim ads that are appearing right now on SEPTA buses in Philadelphia. And then we talked about the legalized discrimination laws that aren't just in Indiana but that are also right here in Pennsylvania and in many other places. Now, of course, these stories are not hard to come by. Injustice, hatred, loss, death, these are part of our world. And we didn't even scratch the surface of the suffering that's out there or even our own pain and struggles. But finally, one student said, don't we have anything more positive to talk about? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, yes. We do because we are a Sunday people, inspired and amazed by grace, and because we are part of the resurrection story too. So a little later that evening, as we gathered for worship, we heard the words of 11-year-old Robbie Novak, more widely known as Kid President, whose inspiring videos seek simply to change the world. So in his latest installment called A Letter to the Future, he talks in his own way about our role as an Easter Sunday people in a Good Friday world. So picture an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> Some people think the future is gonna be dark, 
Like people crying, robots crying, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Well, I think about the future a lot. And I believe it's going to be awesome. It has to be. It's going to be. Sure, there are bad things in the world, but there's also pizza. <laughs> wait, wait. I can think of something better than that. Yes, there are bad things in the world, but there's also you. We just got to change some stuff. Throw kindness around like confetti, although kindness is less messy. When life gives you lemons, go blog about it online so people can feel sorry for you. <laughs> no, that's not what you do. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. lemonade. And then you drink it. And then you dance. <laughs> but then he says my favorite line. Be the reason someone dances this week. See, there's bad stuff in the world, but there's also you. And you can do anything you want today. So be bold, be kind, be awesome. And then repeat, kind of like shampoo, <laughs> only with your life. That is our part of the resurrection story. Yes, we know that resurrection does not erase the cross. That the world still groans in pain and in suffering. But in the midst of that, we are witnesses to new life. What's more, with the power of God's love in us, we can be creators of it. Make lemonade. Be creators of of new beginnings, of forgiveness, of inclusion, of hope. As Millard Fuller, the founder of Habitat for Humanity said, the proof that God raised Jesus from the dead is not the empty tomb, but the full hearts of his transformed disciples. The crowning evidence that Jesus lives is not a vacant grave, but a spirit-filled fellowship. Not a rolled-away stone, but a carried-away church. So I ask, how can we be a carried-away church? A spirit-filled fellowship? Well, I believe it's by living as Easter people in the midst of Good Friday pain. To love others as Jesus loved. By not just desiring peace, but practicing peace. And working for peace for all people. By welcoming those who are different with a true desire to understand them by giving of our valuable time to be the reason someone dances this week, by not turning our back on those who really do need our help, by standing up for those who cannot stand up for themselves, by becoming fluent in the language of forgiveness, by seeing the possibilities of new life everywhere, by being the voice and the hands of hope. Yes, by living as a resurrected people. Because there at the empty tomb, we are called to life. It's not Friday anymore. It's Sunday. So let's live amazed by grace, filled with hope, and transformed to be a part of the resurrection story, the story that is only just beginning when we say, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And happy Easter. <laughs>